بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته um, جزاكم الله خير for everyone for joining us um, today to celebrate um, the life um, and uh, legacy of our late brother Muhsin Kelby who passed away a year ago today um, inshallah today we will first start with a recitation from Surah Al-Zumur um, and inshallah then we will um, begin our, our talk inshallah أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وسيق الذين اتقوا ربهم إلى الجنة زمرا حتى إذا جاءوها وفتحت أبوابها حتى إذا جاءوها وفتحت أبوابها وقال لهم خزنتها سلام عليكم وقال لهم خزنتها سلام عليكم طبتم فادخلوها خالدين وقالوا الحمد لله الذي صدقنا وعده وأورثنا الأرض نتبوأ من الجنة وأورثنا الأرض نتبوأ من الجنة حيث نشاء فنعم أجر العاملين وترى الملائكة حافين من حول العرش يسبحون يسبحون بحمد ربهم وقضي بينهم بالحق وقضي بينهم بالحق وقيل الحمد لله رب العالمين صدق الله العظيم The translation of the meaning of those ayat And those who were mindful of their Lord will be led to paradise in groups When they arrive at its already open gates Its keepers will say peace be upon you You have done well come to stay forever the righteous will say praise be to allah who has fulfilled his promise to us and made us inherit the land to settle in paradise wherever we please how excellent is the reward of those who work in righteousness you will see the angels all around the throne glorifying the praises of their lord for judgment will have been passed on all with fairness. And it will be said, praise be to Allah, Lord of all worlds. A year ago today, we lost one of Isra's founding members, our late brother Muhsin Kelby, who passed at the age of 72. Brother Muhsin Kelby was a world-renowned photographer who took many iconic images of the Muslim world and especially of Palestine, of Beit al-Maqdis. He has hundreds of pictures of Al-Aqsa Mosque, the Dome of the Rock, and they have been printed everywhere in the press. From his travels around the world, he deeply became engaged with the history and architecture of Beit al-Maqdis. And he made um, an exhibition um, of those collections of his pictures of um, different places in Beit al-Maqdis. One of our aims um, at the Academy for Islamic Jerusalem Studies is to advance Muslim education and research in Islamic Jerusalem Studies. And over the past 26 years, Alhamdulillah, we've been able to achieve that through um, holding international academic conferences, uh, developing programs at a postgraduate level um, on Islamic Jerusalem studies, and also publishing um, journals um, and other material, of which was also the three exhibitions 
um, that featured the pictures and images taken by our late brother, uh, Mohsen Kelby. And these exhibitions have traveled the world um, and have been seen by many people. And all of this is really to fill that gap in scholarship on Islamic Jerusalem studies. Brother Muhsin was a very dedicated person to the work of Bayt al-Maqdis. Inshallah, the aim of our meeting today is to get to know him a little bit more, to hear some personal memories uh, from people who know him very closely. Um, and it is my honor to introduce today's guests um, who inshallah will share their personal experience, personal memories that they have with our late brother Mohsen. So today, inshallah, we have with us um, uh, Professor Abdul Fattah al the founder of the field of the Inquiry of Islamic Jerusalem Studies and Professor of International Relations uh, at a number of uh, international universities. So, um, and we also have a number of other speakers. Inshallah, I will start first with Professor Ilawesi, if you can share with us some of the memories that you have of um, Brother Mohsen. Um, I don't think we can hear you. Um, I'm not sure if there's a yeah, the mic. I was, yes, we can hear you now. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه. Writing sometimes it's much easier than talking or speaking about a person you know for a long time and you shared with him a lot of uh, good memories so it's uh, it's not an easy uh, to speak when you lose a brother uh, brother Mohsen was like my uh, uh, sincere brother uh, which uh, first time I met when he visited me in my house in Al Khalil the city of Al Khalil in the uh, West Bank uh, with uh, a number of uh, brothers who came with a mission uh, during the first intifada, the first intifada uh, in 1987, but they visited us uh, in Al Khalil in 1989, uh, more than 30 years ago, and they were coming, as I said. Uh, uh, to shoot a documentary film about the Intifada. And uh, uh, that documentary film, which has been shown uh, the brutality of uh, the Israeli occupation, uh, named uh, The Promise. Uh, so I met Brother Mohsen with the other brothers. That was my first uh, time I met with him. And uh, uh, I invited them, or my father, my late father, uh, invited them uh, for a meal in, in my house in, in Al Khalil. And uh, uh, my father uh, was doing the Palestinian custom. Uh, when he got a guest, he don't eat. He tried to feed uh, his guest. And uh, this was well noticed uh, from Brother Mohsen because at some point, Brother Mohsen looked at me and he said, please ask your father to stop feeding me. I'm feeling, I'm feeling uh, uh, full. So this was my first uh, uh, meeting 30 years ago, exactly more than 30 years ago. Uh, and then uh, Brother Mohsen, uh, uh, during his uh, visit to Al-Aqsa Mosque, I was teaching in Al-Quds University, and I was teaching my student uh, within Al-Aqsa compound. Uh, so Brother Mohsen visited me over there several times to uh, part of uh, shooting and taking uh, photos 
of uh, Al Aqsa Mosque, and he showed me some of my old uh, uh, photos when I was teaching on one of the famous mastaba in Al Masjid Al Aqsa. Then, uh, after my uh, deportation by the Israeli authority and came for a treatment uh, to uh, the UK in 1994, uh, one of the first people I met was uh, Brother Mohsen. And uh, uh, I shared uh, with him that we need uh, 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 to continue what we started in, in Al Masjid Al Aqsa, and we need to establish an academy uh, for uh, Bayt Al Maqdis uh, in the United Kingdom. And he was the third founder of uh, this, uh, this project. And uh, uh, I remember the long meetings we have in Dumblain in, 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 in Scotland when we uh, establish. Uh, uh, the academy, and uh, with uh, his good wife, uh, Um Safiya, uh, used to come and to stay with us in 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 in, in our house, uh, and we have we have as a family. So it started uh, uh, this uh, 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 brotherhood with me, and then it spread to the rest of my family uh, with my father and later on in the UK with the whole of my family and in particular with my sons and uh, with, uh, uh, with my uh, daughters. Uh, 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 Brother Mohsen, uh, علي, he was a dedicated and very passionate. Uh, he was uh, keen uh, of what he was doing and he felt this uh, academy, founding this academy will fulfill uh, some of his uh, 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 desire to serve Al Masjid Al Aqsa and uh, and and Bayt Al Maqdis, and I can uh, I have seen this by my naked eye through this uh, uh, this uh, thirty years. Uh, uh, so it was when I, when when I heard the news. I was traveling when I heard the news last year that. Uh, he passed away. It was a very emotional uh, moment uh, uh, for me because I said he was he was more than my brother. Uh, he was one of my closest brother, and uh, I pray to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that uh, both of us uh, be under the uh, 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 the umbrella of what Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So we will be in the shadow on the hereafter uh, uh, as a result of this uh, good uh, brotherhood. Uh, what I would like also uh, to share with uh, 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 brother, uh, uh, yani, some, some of my good memories of uh, brother Mohsen, uh, uh, I asked him, uh, I think that was in the UK, uh, maybe in 1994, I don't think I asked, him that question in Al Khalil, but in uh, in London uh, because I lived in London for treatment in 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 the hospital uh, after deportation by the Israeli occupation. Uh, I asked him, Brother Mohsen, what was your feeling when you first time entered uh, Al Masjid Al Aqsa? And his answer uh, 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 put me in tears. When he said, uh, first time I was in Al-Aqsa Mosque, uh, remind me when I kissed the black stone in, 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 in the Kaaba. So you can, you can see how he connected uh, Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa with Al-Kaaba. And there is uh, uh, a lot of excellent research done by uh, the leading scholar, Dr. Haytham al on, on 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 this issue. So that was a feeling of a new Muslim because Brother Mohsen, Mohsen uh, uh, converted to Islam uh, in uh, 1986. By the way, 1986, I got my PhD from Exeter uh, University, but uh, we don't know each other at that, uh, at that time. So that sort of 
of connecting Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa in the heart and in the mind of a brother Muhsin, uh, showing uh, the fitra of that, uh, that uh, connection. Also, uh, uh, I was uh, during uh, these uh, long uh, uh, years in uh, United Kingdom when he visited me or, uh, in Scotland or I visit him, uh, visited him in London. Uh, uh, I, I, I used deliberately uh, to ask him to be my imam. Uh, and every time he would recite uh, uh, short surahs of what he memorized, he put me in tears. Uh, and uh, subhanallah, uh, that reminded me of the early Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when they converted and they became uh, became uh, became Muslim and every time he led the prayer in my house or in his house uh, that was uh, a moment of uh, 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 was very emotional uh, uh, because that reminded me of the early uh, Muslims when they uh, converted uh, to Islam and showing showing uh, the recitation of the uh, of the Quran from uh, a muslim convert is uh, something something you need to experience then you can you can appreciate this uh, brother muhsin also one of the things i admire him and uh, i pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, it will be in his hasanat that his mother uh, his mother uh, uh, was uh, a non muslim and he continued looking after his, his mom and he was nursing her when she was ill until she passed away. And this is showing that uh, even your parents are not Muslim. You need to look after, after them. This is one of the uh, uh, obvious teaching of the Quran when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Isra, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا you have to look after uh, your your parents, although uh, they were not Muslim. So I have witnessed this, and uh, and also uh, his wife, uh, sister Um Safiya, was helping him to do this. And uh, after she passed away, then he decided uh, that he will move with his uh, good wife and daughter. Uh, uh, to Malaysia uh, uh, to live uh, uh, to live there. So, yani, this is this is some of some of the uh, things it uh, uh, remind me. But I'm, I'm one of the uh, uh, I wasn't in, in, in phone call most of the time, uh, uh, either when we were in the UK or when I was uh, uh, traveling. Uh, and normally we have a long conversation. And I enjoyed that conversation. Now when I look back to this conversation, I say, subhanallah, subhanallah, uh, 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 of these uh, uh, good memories. One of the uh, 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 conversation which I remember because it was one of the latest uh, conversation that was uh, uh, in October, in October, uh, 2019, and a few months before he passed away, and we were organizing the International Academic Conference for Islamic Jerusalem. This is an annual event. And by the way, Brother Mohsen, since the first conference in 1997 at Sawas, University of London, he did not miss any uh, of, these, uh, of these conferences. So, uh, in the 19th conference in 19 uh, sorry in 2019 uh, 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 the doctor advised him you can't uh, travel because he was uh, uh, i think preparing for uh, an operation or he uh, uh, just done uh, the operation and he was very sad he was very sad that he will miss uh, 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 the conference and the forum and uh, a lot of our brothers and uh, sister, which they know Brother Mohsen, they were very sad that Brother Mohsen was uh, uh, not, uh, not with us. Uh, Subhanallah, 
we uh, did not realize that uh, he was he was uh, preparing for uh, meeting Allah subhanahu wa taala. Uh, so I, I I I this is this is some of of my uh, uh, few words which I would like I would like to share with the brother uh, Mohsen personally when uh, I lost a very close brother. I lost a very close brother and I don't think it will be replaced by uh, anyone. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we meet in the Jannah, inshallah, tabarak wa ta'ala. And uh, we will be in the shadow on that, uh, uh, that day. And may Allah accept all his deeds. He was, he was fighting for justice. Uh, for Palestinian, he was fighting for uh, uh, bringing uh, uh, justice uh, to the land of, of Amal, to the land of hope. And inshallah, tabarak wa ta'ala, we will continue his legacy. We will work very hard uh, 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 to achieve this. And one day when Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa will be liberated, we will remember uh, 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 Brother Mohsen. And wa- I was very glad, I was very glad that before he buried, there was a, a, a prayer of janaza of absentees uh, in Al-Aqsa Mosque. Uh, on the third, on the same day, he passed away. And this was an appreciation of uh, uh, the Muslims of the work of, of Muhsin. May Allah accept him and, uh, uh, and help us uh, uh, to continue his his work, insha'Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, with the good people uh, with us today. Barakallah fikum, wa jazakum allahu khayran, wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair um, for sharing those beautiful memories that you've had with uh, Brother Muhsin. What an example. I think that there are some, some things that I even remember as a child, but there are other things that I think I was too young to, to kind of be aware of, but Subhanallah, the example uh, that he was as a person, you know, towards his family, towards his mother. Um, But also I do actually remember, subhanallah, the long meetings that um, you you used to have with Brother Muhsin and other members when you were establishing the academy. Um, And subhanallah, I do remember many times, um, you know, we would have food served and then all of a sudden, there's a meeting or a phone call and as children we just had to exercise patience (laughs) subhanallah so i think a lot of beautiful memories and a lot of things for us to take home and to continue that work especially of a person who subhanallah came into islam um, and gave so much in in such little time gave a lot to to the muslim world and especially to the cause of bayt al maqdis and i think this is definitely something we can all learn from so jazakallah khair for um sharing um those beautiful memories uh, inshallah next we will go um uh, i'd like to invite uh, professor ruslan muhammad noor uh, the head of islamic history and civilization department at the university of malaya um he is actually uh, the first graduate of isra to become a professor so that's something that we are extremely proud of um he's one of the leading scholars um in bayt al maqdis uh, studies um so I, I will pass it on to you inshallah to share some of your <laughs> memories that you've had with brother Mark. yes uh, thank you very much uh, sara that is a very generous introduction of uh, myself thank you so much of that um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabi'ahum bi isanim la yawmiddin. Assalamualaikum and uh, good afternoon to everyone. Thank you, man. Uh, alhamdulillah. Um, I, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers of this uh, event, uh, especially Isra who um, uh, take the initiative to organize this and get everyone together, alhamdulillah. Um, and also, I would like to thank as well uh, Professor Abdul Fattah Al-Waisi, which is very uh, close to me. Um, it's my mentor, My uh, used to be my supervisor. Now, I regard him as uh, my mentor in uh, the academics. Uh, alhamdulillah, uh, he always... Uh, 
try to contact me and uh, make sure that I'm available for uh, this event today. And Alhamdulillah, I also can see everyone, uh, my colleagues um, in this occasion. And uh, not to forget the um, family of uh, our uh, late uh, brother Mosin. Uh, Sister Nora also with us uh, this uh, afternoon. Alhamdulillah, actually, uh, night time in Malaysia now. It's Maghrib time uh, and I'm heading to uh, another meeting after this. Uh, but Alhamdulillah, uh, don't worry that I stopped by on uh, the roadside just to be with uh, every one of you. Alhamdulillah. Um, what I can uh, remember of uh, our late brother, uh, the first meeting that we had uh, probably uh, in 2001 that was uh, um, uh, in the um, interview session actually um, to get the scholarship from ISRA. So ISRA is uh, very much on uh, my heart as well because ISRA has helped a lot in my academic endeavors, alhamdulillah. So during that uh, meeting, if I can still remember, he did ask me uh, some question and I could uh, actually, because his voice is very, very clear and very different to others. So when I came to the UK, when he um, uh, came to um, Dundee, we met in Dundee and then he asked me, is this Roslan that we spoke on the phone? I said, yes. Uh, so when he asked me, I still remember the voice of uh, Brother Mosin. So it's very, very, um, uh, I feel very um, delightful that I can meet such a, a good person in, uh, in my life. Um, um, I think um, during that meeting as well, the conversation was uh, quite um, tense, which I've, I, I, do not really feel that I can get the scholarship, but Alhamdulillah, with the, the grace of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and with the grace of the members of uh, Isra, they granted me the scholarship, and I came to study in the UK, which I. Uh, the UK. Um, <clears throat> When uh, we uh, had uh, several uh, occasions, several events in Dundee, I still remember he uh, came from uh, London to Scotland uh, to be with us in uh, Dundee in uh, some events, in uh, some important meetings, in the official um, opening ceremony of uh, Al Maktoum Institute in uh, Dundee. And uh, we um, interact, and Alhamdulillah, uh, since uh, that um, uh, moment, we um have a good uh, relation until he moved back to uh, Malaysia as uh, been mentioned by Professor Abdul Fattah Al-Waisi when he decided with his family to move to Malaysia and stay in Malaysia. And uh, another occasion which I um, uh, still remember that when he came to uh, the University of Malaya in uh, 2018, uh, when I invited him for the launch of uh, um, my book, which is the, um, state, uh, the significance of Islam, Jerusalem in Islam. Um, this is a very special occasion because uh, that uh, time the Ministry of uh, Religious Affairs of Malaysia came to the event and he launched the book. And that book uh, later in that year um, was uh, regarded by the Ministry of Higher Education in Malaysia to be awarded um, as the, um, um, the... I received the prestigious award from the Ministry of Higher Education because of uh, that book. So this is uh, the... Um, the the barakah of working with Islamic Jerusalem. I take this word and I still remember uh, Professor Abdul Fattah always mentioned that when you work with uh, Islamic Jerusalem, you can feel the barakah, you can have this. And that happened also with Brother Mohsin who always uh, asking me about my development in the University of Malaya and things like that. And it took me actually more than uh, 
more than uh, 10 years to get uh, that book published. Actually, that book is uh, the work of uh, my PhD thesis, uh, which I have done it um, in 2006, and I got it published in 2017, 2018. So it is uh, almost 10 years after I um, uh, did my PhD that I could publish. This is... A lot of friends, including Brother Mohsin, always, uh, our late Brother Mohsin always asks about my development. So I try to take a challenge uh, uh, to get the uh, publication and to get the books published. And Alhamdulillah, um, he uh, plays some roles in uh, motivating us in uh, this uh, kind of uh, work. Alhamdulillah. So um, I feel that this is... Um, when we heard about the um, uh, about our brother pass away last year, uh, I felt that this is a great loss to every one of us. Um, probably, as has been mentioned by Professor Abdul Fattah, it's very very sudden to us. And for me, this is a great loss to the field of Islamic Jerusalem as well because his passion, his uh, ability, his uh, work on uh, Islamic Jerusalem, on Baitul Maqdis is uh, very much regarded as, um, uh, I mean, helping everyone of us in, in this kind of uh, field. Although he is not an uh, academician as, um, as we may understand, but he, his passion is, uh, is uh, really, really great. And his, uh, his own field, a photographer, as you mentioned, he did it in excellent way. So this is a very much, um, uh, for me, he's a role model in, in, uh, in uh, some way in, in uh, fulfilling the gap in Islamic Jerusalem, uh, in um, uh, advancing, advancing the, the, the um, study and the interest on uh, Baitul Maqdis itself. So um, I think, um, again, this is a great loss for everyone. Um, even though that we kind of um, um, uh, can, in, in certain way, we cannot accept how fast that he, uh, he was, uh, I mean, he passed away, I mean, to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then we have to remember as well because uh, as a Muslim, we guided uh, with the Quranic uh, uh, book, uh, with the Quran, with the revelation, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always uh, reminded us uh, with uh, a specific verse that Kullu nafsin za ikotul maut, so that every, everyone will face uh, that. Uh, and also, uh, the other verse uh, mentioned that إِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهَا لَا يَسْتَأْخِرُونَ السَّاعَةَ وَلَا يَسْتَقْدِمُونَ and whenever that day uh, come, uh, it will not be. Um, it will be. Uh, it, it will happen to everyone. I mean. So this is a, a kind of uh, uh, a good reminder to us um, in this day, in this occasion, the remembrance of our late brother Mosin. We make dua to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that we can meet again, inshallah, in Jannah together and. Inshallah, with the barakah of uh, working on Baitul Maqdis, working on Islamic Jerusalem, Inshallah, we can feel that kind of feeling that Brother Hussein felt when he first entered uh, Al-Aqsa uh, Mosque. Uh, actually, with the advice of my um, great mentor, Professor Abdul Fattah al until now, I didn't step in into uh, Masjid Al-Aqsa, Inshallah. I feel that I would like to go uh, one day and inshallah together with everyone inshallah ta'ala thank you very much uh, sister sarah that's uh, that i would like to say the, for for the for today event thank you very much barakallah uh, professor ruslan it is so good to see you i know it's been subhanallah <laughs> so many years ago um and it's actually a pleasure to hear your um experience and memories with uh, brother muhsin and it's so nice how you brought us back to that first uh, uh, interview uh, that you had um, 
with Brother Muhsin and other uh, committee members uh, to offer you that scholarship. And subhanAllah, what, what an achievement you have been um, also for, um, you know, in terms of your research um, on Islamic Jerusalem studies. Um, and I think there's a point that, um, that you mentioned about Brother Muhsin, subhanAllah, never missing um, any event um any um you know any work on Bayt al Maqdis, he was always there. He would travel, whether it was from London all the way to Scotland uh, or to different parts of the world. And I think this is something also for us to take. Sometimes we think, subhanAllah, oh, you know, it's too far or it's too this. And I remember when he was in Malaysia, so far away, he would still be there you know, for the conferences and exhibitions and um, uh, and other events. Um, what an example and what a caring teacher um, uh, that he is. Um, may Allah have mercy on his soul, inshallah. Jazakallah khair for your um, great input, um, um, inshallah. Yeah, thank um, you, thank you. Subhanallah. Um, inshallah, we will, I mean, it's, Next, um, it's my honor really to um, introduce uh, Sister or Auntie Noura, um, Brother Muhsin's um, wife, um, and also um, a member of the management committee of ISRA. Um, SubhanAllah, I, I don't know where to start, um, but SubhanAllah, um, the life that you have had with Brother Muhsin, SubhanAllah, only you can share some of those memories. Um, you know, may Allah be pleased with him and give him the highest strengths in, in Jannah, inshallah. Um, but it's, it's uh, lovely to have you with us. Jazakallah khair for joining us all the way from Malaysia. Yeah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rabbi Shroff Lee Sodri, why you see the Amri Wahu that and Nisani Kauli. I would like to say to start with Al Fatiha for my beloved husband, Musin Kilpi. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alamin, Ar Rahman Rahim, Madiki Amiti. Yeah, I cannot be here, I cannot stay. He did not see Rotom Mustaki, my Sotom, as he did. Before I start, I would like to apologize that I am not as fluent public speaker as, as some of the professors in this panel. So bear with me. Um, I'm a lay woman, <laughs> you know, I don't do these things. And this is my first time particip participating using, what is it called? Stream yet? Yes. But before I thought it was Zoom. So that's why. Anyway, bear with me if there is Take some glitch. Okay. Anyway, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have granted me a beautiful marriage with Mosin Kilbi. The friend who helped him take Shahada years ago, that it was. 1986 gave him the name as he said it suit him to the teeth he loved to help people before he became muslim and after he became muslim very much so after he became muslim he especially loved his history and you know, he loved Islamic history, and that is why we built our house in Malacca, which is the historical state of Malaysia where Islam first came to the country. So he would like, you know, to do research on the history of, of how Islam comes to this country. But he didn't complete it, I'm afraid. Anyone knows him, knows that he could talk for hours about the Islamic history of Palestine, especially about Al-Quds. I wish I could remember it all, but unfortunately, some of it has become a blur. And although some were written down 
and remembered, there were just so many to keep up a record of it. So, and by Allah's plan, he was taken a lot sooner than we would have ever imagined. I hope ISRA or any other organization that kept an archive of his talk are able to share it with me and the, his children so that we can continue his aspiration, inshallah. He love, his love for Al-Aqsa shows in his photos. He once described the area to me as heaven. When you are inside the compound, you feel as if it's heaven. But once outside, it's like hell. It's, so it's like, it's a very weird feeling that is heaven and hell together at the same area. From his photos, he wanted to show the beauty of Al-Aqsa from the eyes of the, the, the many generation of people who built it fi sabilillah, a palace that is not for human beings, he said, but its beauty being for the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said whenever he entered the compound, it entered his heart. It's a wonderful experience, he said. He loved it. And all he ever wanted to do was to go back. Unfortunately, for years he couldn't go back because we were looking after his mom until she passed away. After that, in 2009, we packed and moved to Malaysia to begin another new chapter. Even though he didn't go there personally, his heart was always with Alaksa. He always said, it, if you cannot change the situation of the occupation with your hand, at least hold it in your heart and make doa for Al-Aqsa and the Palestinian who have been protecting it. A Palestinian of ours, a Palestinian friends of ours once said, we Palestinian have been given baraka by Allah to become martyrs. Mosin then say, let us all seek martyrdom by protecting by, by the Makdis. We as a family started boycott, boycotting Israel before BDS even existed. When our daughter Safiya was small, Mosin would even get some anti-Zionist stickers and stick them on the products of the of Israel whenever we went shopping every weekend. Hit the Zionists where it hurt, he says. That is their pocket. BDS is the best way for an ordinary lay person like us to fight Zionism at a distance, aside from raising awareness to others. Apart from that, he would do countless photo exhibition and talks as lots of you remember. Before his last trip to London last year, he wanted to bring me to Palestine. But because of some reason, the plan changed to him going with his son Zach instead. Long story cut short, the long story cut short, when we reached London last year, his health went downhill. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves him more and took him on, uh, took him at 3.20 a.m. around Fajr, before Fajr time on Friday. With which the Shahada uttered from his last breath 
and his index finger pointed up to the sky. And the Palestinian kafia wrapped around his, his neck. He kept his strong, sincere love all the way to the hereafter, inshallah. May Allah accept his intention and his deed and place him among the pious and unite us back together in, in, again, inshallah. Amen. Inshallah, we will be united again. Amin, amin ya Rabb. Jazakallah khair, Sister Nora. Um, that was very moving. <laughs> it's too... <laughs> it reminds me a lot. I, I'm trying to forget all the bad things and just remember the good things. And, you know, it's a year and it's really hit my... <laughs> anyway. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. May Allah keep you strong yeah. and give you patience. Yeah. I just say Alhamdulillah he had a good death kind of thing because he yeah. was he was uh, doing the shahada with the children. The children all were doing the shahada together. And mm -hmm. then he went. Alhamdulillah. What a beautiful death. I know. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. May Allah give you all patience and sabr um, and give you all ease. And I know all the children who are not children, really, Safiya, <laughs> Safiya and Naomi. Uh, inshallah. What, uh, so inspiring. Um, may Allah be pleased with him, inshallah. Um, Subhanallah, I, I, I like what you said. You kind of gave us um, things that, you know, he used in his life to support a cause like this that, you know, anyone can do, really. Um, you know, when you talked about the boycott and how much he encouraged, you know, Safiya to do it from a young age and just building awareness of, you know, uh, Bayt al-Maqdis and um, what's going on in Al-Aqsa Mosque. And Subhanallah, from you know, a person, you know, he has been, uh, you know, bred and brought up in London. I mean, what what is that cause to him? But subhanAllah, something so close to his heart um, and something so vital in our deen. Um, what, what an example, I think, to all of us. Um, you know, we, we all say we want to do something, but subhanAllah, he, he's, he's an inspiring story that you can do so much. Um, regardless of, you know, where you're from, where you live, there is always something you can do. The thing about him, before he became Muslim, he was fighting for the South African. Mm -hmm. And they were doing boycotting and whatnot. So after he became Muslim, he, and he knows about Jerusalem and how Palestine uh, the Palestinians suffer, he thinks that boycotting is the the answer to it, you know. So it's it it has to start with the with you yourself kind of thing and your family, and mm -hmm. then your neighbors, and then it goes on from there, you know. So the with the Jews, the Zionist Jews, they really think about money. I'm afraid if it hits right in their pocket then they will take notice so that's the only way to do it you know so, absolutely and apart from israel of course <laughs> you do the uh, uh education parts and things like that that that's good and, and subhanallah through his um photography he was able to just enter the hearts of so many people in terms of Bayt al-Maqdis. He introduced that place to them. Um, you know, the exhibitions that he has made, the, the land of prophets, different parts of Al-Aqsa Mosque, different parts of the region, um, just showing you to what extent, subhanAllah, that he was able to get to millions of 
people and um just for our viewers today all the pictures that we are showing are actually pictures taken by um our brother muhsin um may allah be pleased with him inshallah um so all and like you say we see the beauty of this place through his work um and may allah continue to make this um uh, his sadaqa jariya inshallah and accept it um from him and from you all and inshallah you will be able to continue that legacy and that work and always inspire us to continue as well and to you know and to and to work hard um yeah. inshallah we, we actually have his archive right here and if, you know it be used that will be very good because it will carry uh you know rewards to him kind of Absolutely, and I think we need to continue his work um, and continue to showcase all the pictures and uh, photographs that he has taken. All the all the works. I was subhanallah just the other day watching um, an interview that he made with one of the channels online, and it's subhanallah, it's it's beautiful to see how much, you know, he, he it was his passion. It was it was all of his life, and it's it's beautiful to see and to just kind of take lessons from that for us today and to see how much we can still be doing there is so much to be done yes exactly the, the young generation i mean yes. Yes. <laughs> we're slowing down and the the young generation have to take over Yes. May Allah give, give us all the tawfiq to continue, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Um, Auntie Noura, um, and you're very close to our hearts um, and to our family. May Allah reward you and um, give you all patience. Um, and inshallah, grant him the highest place in Jannah, bi-idhnillah. Um, inshallah, uh, moving on, um, um, I would like to invite um, Dr. Khalid el um, the director of the Center for Islamic Jerusalem Studies, um, and also one of the leading scho scholars on Islamic Jerusalem Studies. Um, and I know you uh, probably have many memories of Uncle Muhsin, as we used to call him. Um, so, inshallah, I will leave it to you, inshallah, to share some of your memories. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa min wala. To speak after uh, our sister, uh, Um Safiya, uh, Noura, uh, about Muhsin, uh, uh, it's very difficult. Uh, uh, I remember him from the childhood back in Palestine when he visited us. And I remember particularly when we went to the grave of the great Sahabi Tamim bin al Siddari, which was vandalized by Zionists in 1987. And he took the first photos of the vandalism uh, of this great Sahabi's uh, tomb in Beja Green, uh, close to Hebron, close to Al Khalid. And uh, I remember him coming to our local mosque and shooting. Uh, photos of the girls memorizing the Quran and uh, using these photographs uh, in his uh, exhibitions. And then back in uh, London uh, and then in Scotland when we met uh, again. And this time uh, I learned from him that uh, a photograph is sometimes uh, more than not just a thousand words but a million words uh, and i worked with him on translating the captions of the exhibitions that he had done the three exhibitions commissioned for isra uh, on Beit al uh, the captions in arabic we sat and we talked and uh, as sister noura has mentioned uh, his stories never end, and he gives his stories to the uh, smallest details. Uh, he shares the smallest details, the fine. I'm not sure if we've lost Dr. Yes. Khalid. Are you still there? Yes. Uh, my apologies. Uh, so yes, um, uh, it was 
he will tell you the smallest details of the stories, uh, sharing uh, every story, every photo that he has taken has a story. And he shares the greatest details of these stories uh, uh, to the smallest minute details. Uh, the last time we met was in Turkey at the last conference and uh, uh, again uh, you never get bored of listening to uh, his stories every time it has a new dimension it has a new thing and as we were going through some of his pictures I showed him some pictures I had taken in Laksa Mosque and he said yes I need to contact this person I need to find this person because I have old photos of them back in the 80s that I would like to share with them. Um, uh, his uh, company and being with him uh, was uh, very enjoyable. Um, his dedication to, the, uh, to helping people, as we heard from his uh, wife, that he wanted to help anyone who needed uh, help. Um, and it was clear in his mind uh, that uh, the difference between Judaism and Zionism. And uh, he told me uh, some Jews were contacting him about some of his photos of Jews who are against Zionism. And he would take the time to educate them that uh, not all Jews agree, agree with the uh, creation of the state of Israel because he had some photos of rabbis who were burning the Israeli flag and he would explain to them why uh, the creation of this Zion state was not uh, was not acceptable. Um, there is a lot that we can talk about uh, Mohsen, but uh, he was, uh, I would say, from my personal experience with him, he was a sincere, loving, kind individual that uh, his loss actually uh, has been a loss uh, to Beit al uh, and this was reflected immediately with the reading of uh, Janazah prayer on him inside the Masjid al-Aqsa, a place where he loved uh, a lot. Um, he, uh, uh, the, the, the prayer was done over him and uh, mm -hmm. If I recall, uh, one of the students of Israel who is in Beit al Mahdis also placed uh, uh, a Quran as a wak on his uh, soul inside the Masjid al Aqsa. So his legacy lives on uh, inside the Masjid al Aqsa. Uh, and uh, his photos are a testimony. Uh, to his work, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it a sadaqa jariya, a continuous charity uh, for him. Uh, the, all the work of Isra, uh, we had Dr. Professor Rusla, Ruslan, who was one of the outcomes of the work of Isra. So I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that any great work that any of the students sponsored by Isra, and next I think Dr. Maher and Dr. Amina Rashid, that all their works, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that. It is also a sadaqa jariya, a continuous charity for our uh, brother Muhsin. And that, uh, uh, I will just share one more story that he shared with me. Uh, in Scotland, he was in the British Library and he said he found a great, he used to love, sit and read. And it was from him I learned a lot about Rachel Muhsin. And one of the things I learned was the first sermon the first khutbah that was delivered in Al-Aqsa Mosque after the liberation of Salah al -Din. And he would read the text of this and we would sit and li uh, listen to these great words. I haven't heard them in Arabic and the first time I heard them was from Muhsin in, in, in English. And he said how powerful this uh, khutbah was. And uh, he was one of the reasons that I, I I wanted to study and learn more about uh, Beit al maqdis and the Barakah of Beit al maqdis And there was not a setting that we would sit except talk about the blessings of this uh, of this area, of this masjid. 
and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he, Allah frees it from occupation. We learn from our brother Muslim that every little counts, every little helps in this direction uh, from the many things that our sister uh, Um Safiya have mentioned. Uh, I think we'll, uh, we will have to continue his legacy in any way that is possible from uh, continuing the work of his archive and the books that he uh, always wanted to write on Malaysia and on Beit al -Mahdis. He always wanted to continue and finish his book and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that these works will be completed and will give him reward while he's in his grave and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gather, gathers us with him on the day of judgment uh, in Jannah uh, under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, Jazakumullah khair and thank you very much for allowing me to speak about our brother Muhsin while looking at some of his very amazing photographs of Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa and very unique photographs of Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. Jazakallah khair, for sharing those um, and it's actually nice subhanallah to to know that you have been inspired and you were also working um, along with him i i had no idea that you worked on the caption with uh, brother mahsan um i remember actually seeing these exhibitions and thinking oh arabic and english you know and uh, all the different fonts that was used um under each picture um it's uh, he's definitely a great loss um to all of us personally and also to Bayt al maqdis um and i pray inshallah that we continue his legacy and his dedication um, and learn from these stories um and hopefully they can inspire us to to continue that work inshallah jazakallah khairan um inshallah we have two further uh speakers or guests um, inshallah, I would like to invite Dr. Maher Abu Munshar, uh, Associate Professor at the University of Qatar. Um, he's also a specialist in Islamic Jerusalem history um, and has a vast number of uh, publications um, in this field. Um, and I'm, I'm sure um, along Beside the other, um, your other colleagues, subhanAllah, you guys share quite a lot of memories with Muhsin and a lot of the work that has been done by Isra um, was kind of done, uh, you know, um, with the hard work of, of, of many of you. So, inshallah, I will leave you to share some of your memories of Brother Muhsin. Inshallah. Bismillah <coughs> ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulil Ameen wa ala ala baytihi wa ashabi ajma'in. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you very much for organizing this uh, uh, session to speak about uh, our brother uh, Muhsin, uh, rahimahullah. Um, uh, of course, it's really hard to, to add to what uh, my other colleagues have uh, mentioned, uh, and especially after, you know, listening to the uh, touching speech of uh, Sister Noura. But inshallah, I will be uh, talking about, uh, um, I'll be adding like, like, uh, uh, some, some, uh, 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 like I'll be, I'll be saying about something uh, which happened to me personally with Doctor, with the sorry brother, uh, Mohsen, and uh, inshallah it will make you feel how how nice is that guy, that man, that brother uh, when we talk about human uh, aspect. Of course, uh, I've had uh, uh, the pleasure of knowing uh, brother Mohsen since 1997, and that was actually. Uh, in the first conference of Islamic Jerusalem Studies in London, University of, uh, uh, University of London, SAWAS. Uh, and at that time, I met that, that man. For me, uh, uh, a, a man who is specialized in, in photography, who, has, who had a passion toward Islamic Jerusalem Studies and Islamic Jerusalem, Palestine in general. He, he had a passion to take photos to all these uh, holy places, sacred places. Uh, and then he wanted to let people know about that place by uh, through his uh, exhibitions. So I met him at that point, but uh, um, the relation was not that strong uh, at that point, but was developed later on uh, 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 in, in, in the coming years. Uh, so I met him uh, in, 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 in a number from Francis, dealing with Islamic Jerusalem studies, but uh, uh, I had much time to sit with him and to speak uh, uh, in details later on when i moved to malaysia 
uh, as a, a senior lecturer at the University of Malaya, and he uh, uh, was already moved or he was about to move to Malaysia. So I've spent one year in Malaysia. So during that time, we met, uh, I think, three or four times uh, uh, um, uh, with, with like uh, uh, Brother Mohsen and, and his wife, uh, Om Safiya. And I do remember that uh, when I told him about a story happened to me when a group of monkeys uh, were about to attack me. Of course, this is actually a story which I like to remember every time I remember, uh, I would like to speak about Brother Mohsen because every time he meets me, uh, like in a conference in Istanbul, in London, uh, here and there, he used to remind me of the issue of the monkeys and telling me that now they are living in, in, in Malacca, in Malaysia, and they have got like monkeys around their houses or, or whatsoever. Uh, and, and, and so he used to remind me of that story every time. So, and he, he, he makes that story a, a nice one when he asked me, um, it's like if I do still uh, got scared from uh, monkey, if I, if I got scared from monkeys or whatsoever. So this actually part uh, 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 in, uh, makes me uh, feel so, so happy when I see uh, Brother Mohsen, when he reminds me of uh, these uh, things uh, that happened to me in Malaysia. But again, in Malaysia, we used to sit and, uh, you know, it, it, it's a nature of uh, Brother Mohsen. When he speaks, he speaks for a longer of time. So he likes to give you a comprehensive picture uh, of, of anything that he would like to speak about. And he had a passion. So when he speaks, he speaks slowly and he tried to give you much details about the issue that he would like you to know. Uh, 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 and that makes you uh, uh, feel that this man with that age, who is not originally Muslim, he, he, he converted to Islam, but he was not a Muslim, but he had that kind of passion to tell you about Jerusalem, about Islamic Jerusalem, about his visit to Palestine, about his uh, 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 repeated visit to Palestine, uh, what happened to him over there, why he was banned, why he was prevented later on, uh, to speak about the photos he took, uh, the places he, uh, he decided to take photo photos for in Palestine or in Islamic Jerusalem. And that made me, at some point, uh, when I looked at the exhibition uh, he had, uh, um, I do remember that uh, when I was about to publish my, my book, uh, the publisher asked me to recommend a photo uh, uh, to be the front cover of my book. And that actually made me recalling the exhibition that uh, Brother Mohsen had. And I, I do remember that I went directly uh, to the photos which were available uh, in Dundee. And then I looked, uh, you see that picture. So, and decided to uh, to choose that picture to be my, uh, the cover, the front cover of my book. So I contacted both the publisher and uh, Brother Mohsen and the, the publisher uh, got the contact details of Brother Mohsen. And then that picture became the front cover of my Book and that to tell you uh, how how professional was uh, Brother Mohsen in taking photos and at some point and how passion he was to spread to disseminate these photos and he was so 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 happy for me to choose that photo and then he told me just let the publisher. Uh, got in touch with me, of course, and uh, uh, so he was so 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 glad to uh, uh, to to have his photo, the picture he, has, he had taken uh, uh, in, in Islamic Jerusalem. Uh, in that picture, he was able to combine two domes, one of them, the dome of uh, uh, the dome, uh, the, you know, the dome of the uh, dome, you know, the Masjid Al-Qubat Al-Sakhra, Dome of the Rock. And once again, he was so glad that have chosen that photo in particular to be the cover of my book. So again, in Malaysia, uh, as I told you, we had a number of, uh, of uh, meeting. He came to, to Kuala Lumpur a number of times. Uh, I think he came twice, if I'm not mistaken, to a uh, University of Malaya where I was working. Then we sat, we spoke. Uh, uh, Sister uh, Noura was was uh, uh, with him. Uh, with him, then I think he came to visit me in my place at twice. I do remember where I was living in Malaysia. When once when I had a, a visitors uh, uh, and there once uh, I do remember 
with his wife. So during that time, that kind of relation became stronger and stronger and stronger, and that kind of uh, friendship uh, uh, was developed uh, further. Uh, as I told you, m most of the times that I met uh, Brother Mohsen uh, were in, in academic conferences, and therefore the last meeting I had with him uh, before he died uh, was in 2018 in Istanbul. He was in a conference. Of course, during that conference, uh, we had the chance uh, to sit down uh, to chat while while uh, while uh, like while we having while, while we were having uh, dinner, lunch, breakfast, whatsoever. And again, as I said before, that brother Mohsen, uh, he had a passion uh, towards. Uh, uh, Al Bayt Al Maqdis, and he wanted to tell you about his experience in that place. So he wanted you to know what happened to him, not only in a very brief manner, but he wanted to tell you in a very detailed fashion, so you could understand what happened to him, uh, 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 like uh, a minute after a minute. Uh, um, there are lots of things to, to be said, but I think uh, my colleagues have mentioned most of them. Uh, again, rahimahullah, and uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him uh, Jannat al-Firdaus, wa assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To Maher, I mean to your dua. Um, subhanallah, he was uh, a genuine and sincere person from, you know, the stories that everyone has mentioned so far. Um, and definitely he had a humor side to him um, and may Allah have mercy on his soul. SubhanAllah, we refer to him as a fa in, in our family as um, Ammu Muhsin, Uncle Muhsin. He was definitely um, an uncle and a brother and a teacher that we have all learned so much from him. Um, and inshallah, Allah will continue um, his work and legacy, um, uh, inshallah. Um, last but by no means least, um, it's um, also my honor to introduce um, Dr. Amino Rashid Yatiban, who is the Director of the Center of Excellence of Islamic Jerusalem Studies at University Atra, Malaysia. Uh, he's also the Associate Professor at the University um, and leading a scholar on Islamic Jerusalem Studies. It's an honor to see you, uh, Dr. Amin. It's been a long time. Um, and inshallah, I hope um, inshallah you and the family are well. Um, inshallah, I'll leave. I'll leave it to you to share some of your memories with um, our late brother Mohsen. Thank you. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Sarah Alawaisi, uh, the chairperson uh, for this uh, session, and thank you very much to the organizers uh, for uh, organizing uh, this. Uh, for me, very uh, important, uh, very meaningful uh, to me and I believe uh, to everybody uh, when we are talking or uh, try to uh, remembering uh, our uh, brother, uh, the late uh, brother Mohsin uh, Kilby. And uh, I will uh, be very interested to share uh, some uh, uh, points uh, relate to him and with the uh, I I mean it's, it's not only uh, a close relationship but it's a wholehearted relationship that we share uh, the same uh, vision uh, the, the same uh, understanding uh, the same belief and the same uh, uh, struggle to uh, to fight for uh, Baitul Maqdis. And uh, I do remember when uh, the first time that I uh, come across the name of uh, uh, Jack Kilby, when I was uh, uh, offered uh, to continue to pursue my uh, study in Islamic Jerusalem studies, uh, doing a uh, master's uh, in Islamic Jerusalem studies uh, in Dandi. So uh, his name was uh, one of the signatory. If I'm not mistaken, uh, he was the secretary of ISRA during that time, uh, Academy of Islamic Jerusalem studies. So because uh, the scholarship that been offered uh, to me is under 
uh, Academy of Islamic Jerusalem uh, Studies. So uh, when I uh, see his name, uh, I saw his name, uh, Jack Kilby. So uh, I, I I do not know him, uh, and uh, but I can feel that this should be uh, somebody with a towering personality that I should learn something from him. And uh, with full of excitement, uh, to cut it short, that uh, I've been offered to, to continue uh, my study at Al Maktoum Institute of uh, uh, Islamic, uh, uh, Islamic, Islamic and Arabic Studies during that, that time uh, in Dundee. Uh, then uh, the first time that I uh, met him, that I learned something from him is about humbleness. That he's very humble, while uh, I uh, may expect him uh, with, uh, like, maybe a different personality. But his humbleness uh, uh, always captivated my heart. That this is a real and uh, who is very honest, uh, working for the sake of Baitul Maqdis, and uh, uh, also. Uh, something uh, very important for me to learn uh, that uh, to work for uh, Baitul Maqdis, uh, definitely we need this kind of humbleness that this is the a true personality uh, for those who uh, try to uh, work uh, and help uh, a uh, to, to save uh, Baitul Maqdis. Uh, and so, so, so that uh, uh, with the, the humbleness that I believe uh, this will uh, help us uh, to uh, disseminate, to spread the, uh, the, the, the vision and also the understanding regarding Baitul Maqdis much easier and to, uh, to try uh, to speak to all uh, kind of uh, people uh, to be uh, closer and come closer uh, to know and uh, to love Baitul Maqdis. Uh, secondly, uh, what I learned from uh, Brother Mohsin uh, was uh, he always uh, be present. Uh, that, uh, yeah, we, we uh, all know that uh, Brother Mohsin uh, didn't have like the, uh, the background uh, of uh, Islamic Jerusalem studies or even Islamic studies. Uh, but then, uh, he uh, showed to us uh, that uh, he will uh, try his best at any possible opportunities for any event related to Baitul Maqdis and the Academy of Islamic Jerusalem Studies, that he will always be there. So uh, uh, be present at all times uh, that uh, when we have uh, a meeting, uh, he will always be uh, on time. And uh, I mean, uh, whether the, the meeting in Malaysia or in uh, Turkey or in the UK, he will always uh, be there on time. In the conference, he will not uh, miss any conference uh, related to uh, Baitul Maqdis and organized by uh, ISRA and uh, its, past, uh, it, its part partners. Uh, and he will always try to contribute something uh, that uh, maybe he's not an orator uh, or a lecturer, but then he uh, uh, kept uh, on uh, sharing his experience, his views, his opinions, his stories that uh, this, uh, another thing that uh, I learned uh, a lot from him, to always uh, be present, that we try to uh, to find the reason why should we uh, be part of the family uh, to fight for the sake of Baitul Maqdis and Al-Aqsa Mosque. And uh, thirdly, uh, what I can uh, also learn from Brother Mohsin uh, that uh, already been mentioned by Dr. Khalid earlier, uh, he uh, I learned from him that every single uh every little helps uh so so that uh he will try to 
uh, to use his experience, his expertise that uh, he uh, he maybe his uh, deep interest on uh, photography. Then uh, he will use all uh, his uh, pictures uh, to be shared uh, and uh, to be involved in uh, exhibition. Uh, this and that, and uh, at the same time. Uh, he will always encourage uh, people uh, to be part of uh, the, uh, the the work of uh, uh, Isra and also uh, the team uh, that uh, uh, promote Islamic Jerusalem studies. And he will always uh, try uh, his best uh, from his end to ensure that uh, from any angle possible uh, to help Al-Aqsa and Baitul Maqdis, he will do. And uh, this, uh, uh, to me, uh, very meaningful. So that, uh, as uh, Brother Musin uh, did, uh, to bring along his wife, his uh, uh, his daughters, uh, to, uh, to also uh, uh, be part and join, contribute uh, to, to help. Uh, to, uh, for the sake of Al-Aqsa Mosque and Baitul Maqdis, uh, so that uh, this always uh, encouraged me and I believe others as well uh, to bring all our uh, families uh, together, uh, to work together, to support, uh, to encourage, to promote uh, the uh, Islamic Jerusalem studies and also uh, to bring people uh, closer and closer uh, to Baitul Maqdis until Baitul Maqdis will be in the heart of uh, everyone, inshallah. So, uh, with all the uh, good deeds, uh, good stories about him, uh, I believe that uh, Allah uh, will uh, place him in the best places uh, uh, beside uh, him, and uh, uh, Allah, uh, maybe Allah, uh, bless him and reward reward him with the best rewards possible uh, for all the good deeds, for all his contribution and sacrifice for the sake of al aqsa Mosque and Baitul Maqdis. I think that's it from, uh, from me. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi and a very good evening to all. Barakallah feek. Jazakallah khair, Dr. Amin al-Rashid Yatiban. Uh, your memories and your insight um, on uh, that you shared with Brother Muhsin. I think one of the things that you said um, uh, that resonate with me is the fact, subhanAllah, that Brother Muhsin and his family were part of this work. Um, he wasn't just working by himself. It was um, Sister Noura, Safiya, all of his family were part of this great work. Um, and SubhanAllah, you reminded me as well with, with your family and with Dr. Fatima and MashaAllah, your lovely family. It's SubhanAllah, this kind of work really, um, the barakah of it um, is, you know, you don't want to keep it to yourself. It's some, it, this passion is definitely uh, radiates to you and to your family and to people around you. Um, and subhanAllah, I remember one in one of the meetings, um, I think I was probably 15, so many, many years ago. Um, and it was probably the first time that I was, um, I got all um, the applications. And I think there were scholarship applications ready for uh, Brother Muhsin and the management committee to um, look through all these hundreds of, um, of applicants. Um, and I think that was probably my first time to hear Brother Muhsin speak about Al-Aqsa Mosque and about Bayt Al-Maqdis and it really just I think it, it really shock, shocked me that you know this is a person who is not from Palestine because I, at that age I thought anyone you know who's concerned with uh, Bayt Al-Maqdis and Al-Aqsa is probably Palestinian but definitely you know he what he didn't tick any of those boxes um, and you know he was from London he was a convert and yet he was working for Bayt al-Maqdis um, and it was his his work and his life. And subhanAllah, that I, th I think Brother Muhsin has inspired all of us in so many different ways. Um, and like you said, subhanAllah, he was so humble and honest. Um, and there's um, a quote that um, I would like to read from uh, Safiya, um, his daughter. Um, she said that he always fought for justice and peace, especially relating to Palestine, and actively sought to help people regardless of background. 
he will always be the most kindest, calmest and gentlest of people um, I have ever met. And I'm lucky to have had him as a father and a teacher and one of my first best friends. And subhanAllah, a lot of the things that people are, uh, our different guests have shared with us today, um, how sincere and how caring Brother Muhsin was. Uh, SubhanAllah resonates with many of us um, who have interacted um, with him. Uh, may Allah be pleased with him, uh, inshallah. It's so beautiful and um, so inspiring, heartwarming to hear all of these um, memories of him. Um, and inshallah, before we want to end today's um, uh, meeting um, with an award that um, the Academy for Islamic Jerusalem Studies has decided to award um, uh, our late brother Mohsen. Um, and I think um, we will have um, the award on the screen uh, for you to see. Um, so the management committee of the Academy for Islamic Jerusalem Studies uh, decided um, in its meeting on the 12th of December 2020 to grant um, the late um, Muhsin Kelby the title Al-Maqdisi. Um, and this uh, award has been granted for his role in establishing the Academy for Islamic Jerusalem Studies as one of its founders who had been a valued and active member of ISRA since its inception. Muhsin had contributed so much to Bayt al-Maqdis Islamic Jerusalem Studies, which he had visited many times in his life. From his professional photographs on Al-Aqsa Mosque, um, he had done three separate photographic exhibitions commissioned by ISRA and were on display in, in numerous countries such as the UK, Malaysia, Indonesia and Turkey. In recognition of his contribution, the Janazza prayer, the funeral prayer in absentee was performed for him in Al-Aqsa Mosque as well as in Indonesia and Malaysia before being buried in London on the 4th of January 2020. Indeed, Brother Muhsin will be greatly missed by all of us and many people around the world. May Allah turn his excellent work for Bayt al-Maqdis as an ongoing charity, Sadaqa Jariya, for him and that justice will be brought for the cause he always worked for. And this is signed by the chairman, Professor Abdul Fattah al -Awaisi. Um, this is the least that we can do uh, uh, as an academy and we pray that Allah accepts uh, all of his work, um, inshallah. Um, and inshallah we will find a way to pass this on to um, our beloved sister Noura, inshallah. Um, on this note, uh, I would like to thank all of our guests, every one of you who have come um, today, this morning or this evening in some, in some countries to share your um, memories and to share some of these beautiful, um, uh, uh, beautiful thoughts that you have shared with uh, Brother Muhsin and you've shared it with us and the viewers. And for you, especially Sister Noura, for taking the time to come and share um, some of these amazing uh, stories from the life of our late uh, brother Muhsin. Uh, I would like to ask everyone, all of our audience, to please take the time to make dua for Brother Muhsin and his family. Um, we pray that Allah grants him the highest place in Jannah, inshallah, and that Allah accepts all of his work. Um, as uh, Sadaqa Jariya, inshallah, and that Allah blesses his family with patience and ease um, and for them to be able to continue and for all of us to be able to continue, inshallah, his legacy and, and dedication for Bayt al-Maqdis. Jazakumullahu khayran. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.